What is good? We're back. We got a little Austin Abbott and Jay Swains for your pleasure. We're gonna talk a little must stashes here in the uh, never grow one of those halfway uh, halfway point or a little past halfway point of, of your 2024 season. Uh, gonna mostly focus on some of the younger guys, but at the end I'll throw some older guys in there. And really, why these kind of shows are important. And you could laugh at some of these names and think it's ridiculous, but here, let's just take this from the top. Right now, uh, in, in former shows that we've done of this or, or just guys that could have been considered these uh, type of players not but a year ago are guys like Cedric Tillman, guys like Kyron Williams, guys like Chuba Hubbard, guys like Jordan Mason, guys like Rico Dowdle. Well, while, while he's not absolutely crushing it this year, you know, he's been very good and very startable to get you through some some spots. Darnell Mooney, you know, Wandell Robinson. Those guys have all all had their time in the sun and faded out and nobody cared about them anymore. And those guys are carrying chunks of your fantasy season. Even guys like Alexander Madison, right? Well, he has he hasn't been sexy this year. He's been very startable throughout maybe some tumultuous parts of your season uh, to get you some spot starts here or there. Like it's not sexy, but and and you know all these guys aren't going to turn into Tillman, Kyron, and Chuba and Mooney and, and Nico Collins. I mean, he was, Robert Woods like eighteen years ago right. was on our mustache. So. List. You know, and I'm not Devontae saying Adams before his third year breakout. Sure, We've been slaying mustaches for but, years. And I'm not saying that you know all these guys that we're going to talk about are going to slay. I'm just saying that like when you're talking about them, have an open mind. And uh, you know these guys aren't aren't killers right now, but they could easily turn into them. Um, you know whether it's we've seen flashes from them, or you know a lot of these guys are going to be on the younger side of things, or we had some hope for them coming in, and maybe the role just hasn't worked out. So uh, right off the rip, for your pleasure, I'm going. Jordan Whittington, this kind of broke down when I, when me and Austin, have we've been digging around on free agents coming up. And when you look at it, Tutu's a free agent. Demarcus Robinson's a free agent. Tyler Johnson's a free agent. Cooper Cup's 105, um, you know. And and Puka's had a, had a little bursa sack injury right there. You know, whether Stafford sticks around for long, I, you know, I don't really care. It doesn't, you know, they'll, they'll figure out the quarterback position as long as McVay's around. So... Whittington's had a few games in there that you can that you see that where he picked up a decent role and did his thing. Obviously, since Cooper Cup and Puka have been back, you know he hasn't had a huge role, but he's also a rookie coming out of Texas. And the point being is, you've seen him flash on the field, you've seen him get some targets, uh, and and the Rams have been very good at drafting wide receivers. Uh, and and here's another one that could easily easily as soon as next year or as soon as the back half of this season have uh, some value again to really help you out. So uh, Jordan Whittington was number one on my list. Again, they could bring back Tutu. They could bring back Robinson, Tyler Johnson. You know, there are some free agent wide receivers. Diggs, T, Keenan Allen, Amari, Godwin, Deontay, Nuke, Hollywood, Elijah Moore, Slayton, Palmer. Um, and we'll get to some of those guys here. But, you know, it's not a crazy stack class where they can go out and just and, and bring it bring in uh, a ton of wide receiver help. So I think Whittington could be a guy they turn to uh, sort of down the line here. Jordan Whittington. Now, how about you, Austin? Give, give me a give me a stash you like here and then I'll throw some more out for your pleasure. Yep, Casey. And the beauty of this is we've never missed on a pro on a prospect, right? This is we have an incredible thing going. Let's keep it going. Let's Maybe. yap about 99.9 percent, baby. Yeah, yeah. Who, 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 who'd you miss on? Hakeem Butler. Hakeem Butler. <laughs> oh, all right, actually, facts, facts. Same. All right, Theo Johnson. Now, mm, two things. Great I, call. Two things. Two things I really like about Theo Johnson so far. Right, we're seeing the snap percentage go up gradually. We're seeing a very, very high snap percentage every week now, and the targets are starting to uptick as well. Right, we're seeing ninety percent, ninety-seven percent, eighty-five, ninety-two percent snap percentage. Right. Great. Last three weeks, four targets, six, six, you know, increasing in receptions as well over the past three weeks. Uh, these are the trends that we like to see, man. And now that we're towards the back nine, you know, the end of the regular season, you know, mid to end, we're getting in that range. This is when a lot of these players start to emerge, especially, you know, the, the, the younger rookies, that is. 
Now, Theo Johnson, a physical specimen, he, he's such a unique situation. He's so interesting, right? It's going to be fun to look back on Theo Johnson because when you look at his collegiate production, f- so far from what you want to see, but then you look at his workout metrics at the NFL Combine, mm-hmm. out of this world, right? So you have the perfect, ar- you have the argument between it's like, well, production or, you know, workout metrics. Like, score, obviously, maybe. yeah, yeah, right. RAS score. That's the only thing that matters, right? That is... <laughs> for the tight end, for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but in all seriousness, like, we see 93rd percentile, uh, 4.57, 40 time. I mean, that's that's wild. Speed score, 98th percentile. Uh, catch radius, 98th percentile as well. Uh, again, 6'6", 259. Dude's just a freak. He falls to day three. Right out of Penn State, he's almost 24 years old. But there's a lot of other advanced analytics that that I I love about uh, Theo Johnson. Right, we're seeing him. Uh, we're, we're seeing Theo Johnson right now. He, he currently ranks uh, seventh in snap share. Right, good sign right there. Mm-hmm. Sixth in slot snaps, good number right there. Eighth in routes run. That right there really caught me off guard eighth in routes run man i, I didn't I think that. like well, when i think of theo johnson or just think of all the tight ends no i don't think theo johnson would even be re- realistically i don't even think he'd be top 25 in that metric and he's eighth so great great there uh seventh in deep targets second in target accuracy eighth in yards per reception right dude can stretch the field more than you think uh so these are just all really good numbers to come out of theo johnson you know early on in his career and you know, say what you want about the Giants quarterback situation. Right now, they have the second overall pick. Everybody in the world knows they're going to take a quarterback. It just mm-hmm. depends on who it is. It depends on where they pick. But uh, they're, they're going to end up walking away with the quarterback. So I think that I think Theo Johnson is just a great buy low. And even if he doesn't end up being, you know, like a mid-tier tight end. Or I'm sorry. Like, like I know he's not going to go on to be a Travis Kelsey or a Mark Andrews. But, hey, maybe he's... At the very worst, just a positive ROI, right? Not going to be mad about that. Shout out to Matt Foreman. Uh, loves Theo Don- Johnson coming from Penn State. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch the first three quarters of that 930 game this past week. I fucking forgot and mm-hmm. turned it on. And looking at the log here, he only had six targets, four catches. I feel like that was all on like the last drive in overtime. He was coming big in the clutch yeah. for them mm-hmm. and had one play where the ball got tipped and he – kept the concentration adjusted to make the catch and then made a move upfield to get a big first down, like put them in position to win. And like, I saw that play and I was like, that was an incredible play for anyone to make. Much yeah. less a rookie tight end. No, I, th- I, th- I think this is a great call. I think what we're seeing from Theo has been good. And we know, like you said, Austin at the end there is that we're going to see some changes in particular at the quarterback position next year and probably another weapon or two to come in there. And Theo looks like he could be a big part of kind of what's going on. Hopefully I, th- I hope they give Dayball another year there. Um, uh, cause I'd like, they to see, will, they will, I'd like to see that kind of moving forward. So I love that call from, from Theo Johnson there. Uh, let's keep it moving. I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick with another tight end, uh, for your pleasure. I'm going to go Ben Sinnott. Now we're, we're getting into the rookie tight ends. Obviously he was a high pick, but people get real grumpy real quick if things aren't working out for you. So people may be throwing him to the wolves here. What's crazy. Is it the same exact thing with the same coach and the same veteran ahead of him happened to Trey McBride? Exactly. His first season. Right. With Kingsbury, Clingsbury and Zach Ertz. Right. Crazy. And so when you look at this team, right, you're looking at Deami Brown, free agent, Zacharias or whatever the hell his name is. Zacchaeus. Free agent. Noah Brown, free agent. Uh, Zach Ertz, who's free agent. And, you know, by the way, like you said, Zach Ertz is the same guy that held down Trey McBride. We see how good Trey McBride is. So just because Zach Ertz is beating out Ben Sinnott right now doesn't mean a goddamn thing. It means Clingsbury is <laughs> stingy with his snaps. But Ertz right now is second on the team in targets. He has 51. The next, the third place guy has 37, and that's that's Brown. Terry has 66. So between Ertz and Terry, Terry has 66. Ertz has 51 tar- targets. I mean, we're, we're in an offense right now. Now, obviously, they're they're you know de- deprived of of weapons over there, and I think you'll see some more guys get added. But let's say Ertz moves on, Senate moves into a prime spot where you know Big Co called me up and said, "Hey, just just mention mention Ertz and the Senate thing." And I was like, "Well, he's already on the list, so you're you're in luck." But uh, you got a young quarterback who's willing to throw it to the tight end. Kingsbury is is getting it to the tight end with Ertz. We've seen this song and dance before. I really like Sinnott. Definitely a mustache. You know, just like Theo Johnson, 
you know, th- it, when we're saying mustache, don't don't I w- I'm not just going to trade them away. And if you can get in deals where people are willing to throw in Theo Johnson or Sinnott for cheap in the back end of those deals, angle for that. So that's that's kind of my thoughts there. Some of these guys are probably also available in FFPC. Yeah, but uh, potentially on, on, hold some on, on, on some lower lower end stuff there. So the, the looking at Dynasty Daddy, these things are all over the place. Like you can get a quarterback like Will Levis in some instances or you could get him for a fourth. Right. So it's all over. So, so that's what I'm Every saying. Some people have, are going to be throwing these guys to the wolves who aren't producing right away. And they're just trying to like, oh, I got he's not producing. Ertz is beating him out or Theo Johnson mm-hmm. isn't producing. He's supposed to be this Raz freak. Now's the uh, time. Now, you know, it's not going to be everybody. Some people have an actual, you know, patience and, and yeah. stick to their guns about what they're doing. You know, imagine In that. a memory of liking uh, someone for being good at football uh, right. and just waiting it out to see if the situation might change. What a crazy thought. Why, we're playing dynasty. Everyone just plays redraft. Right. And that's and that's where, you know, all that list that I threw out in the beginning kind of comes in because all those guys have been guys who you had to keep around for a little while and, and have have paid off. Uh, so that's kind of what we're here doing. Austin, why don't you throw us uh, another guy after that great Theo Johnson drop? Uh, who, who else you got here? And, and, and again, I know we're skewing a lot of young guys, but that's kind of how, you know, it goes here for and I'll throw I'll throw some old guys, uh, older guys here at the end. So what do you got, Austin? Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Yeah, and I don't feel nearly as confident in this next one. Is It's Jermaine Burton, right? And I'll... I'll say some really positive did. things about him, right? I, I worry about Burton's head. I just, I don't think he's got sure. the best head on his shoulders, man. I, I, I'm That's afraid why he was that, a third round pick. In, I know, in, in, I know. You know. So, and and you're 100 percent right, man. That that's why he was a day, that that's why he fell to day two, or or at least where he fell. Like maybe he ends up going, I don't know, late first, early second, so, somewhere in the Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman range, roughly. I think he would have been pretty close to there, but uh, we're, we're seeing the pattern, right? Whether it was him, uh, I think he overslept. Did he oversleep and then ended up at the uh, casino? Like dude. we're seeing, dude, I, it I just, it was crazy. <laughs> he was over there playing Sunday slots by himself. Um, I, I just, but and that's a type but of you stuff did that see him back me. in the in the next game in the fourth quarter and in on fourth downs and third downs getting some targets. So that was semi promising. <laughs> that that's all factual. But like Jermaine Burton, right? He's always been the type of player that that Casey, you, you specifically mentioned this that hey, in your dynasty rookie drafts, man, these are the type of players you want to take a chance on in the third or fourth round because you know they got that high upside, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna say Jermaine Burton his career is over after just a few games, right? I don't, I don't think that for a second, right? And, and we're playing dynasty. I'm looking long-term. You got T Higgins, obviously free agent this upcoming year. Who knows where he's going to be? Your guess is as good as mine. Let's just say he's out of town, right? Of course, Jamar Chase is going to get the bag and then some, mm-hmm. yes, uh, you know, Yosevich is still there. I just, Yoshi I just Bosch. think this is a, a perfect situation for for someone to emerge as a legit wide receiver too, and you got Joe Burrow tossing for 400 passing yards every mm. other game. It feels like bingo. Somebody's got hey, somebody's got if Chase is getting 200 of those, somebody's got to get something else, you know. So uh, I just th- there's a lot of pie left to eat for for that offense, right? And I don't want to I don't anticipate Chase Brown to continue this type of volume we're seeing in the past game. I think he had 11 targets last mm. week. It was, yeah. it was ridiculous, right? Like somebody else has got to start eating there, another wide receiver. And uh, I just, I feel like there's never been a, a better time to buy Jermaine Burton, right? He got a lot of hype this off season, rightfully so. And now we're starting to see, you know, his, his value plummet. So I, I just, I think it's, it doesn't hurt buying real low. Cause if you get burned, oh, well, would you lose a third, a fourth, it's okay. A yeah. lot of people miss on their first round picks in dynasty rookie draft. Thousand. I don't mind throwing away a third or fourth. Thousand so. percent. And and on the on the flip side of it, don't trade them away for that. It, you know, for, for me, I'm I'm just right. gonna hold. I I knew there was a problem here. This isn't new information, mm-hmm. and that's why it was there. So just be patient, hold, see what happens. Is it Canarius Tony? Maybe so. Maybe he just cannot fucking get it through his dome that 
you know, just straighten up and fly right. And you could make yourself some money and secure a crazy bag because you are very talented. Mm. Um, and, and you're in a prime position here. Like you said, Joe, that Joe Burrow drop. And we knew that it might even be a year for Burton, even if his head was on right, because T is around. Um, so Kadarius Tony, that's one of the point one percenters that we missed oh. going out for a homie. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was just a bill. So much ability. I'll never quit him. And I have quit him. Let's keep it moving. He quit us. I'm going to I'm going to throw uh, two more guys out there. These are Texans. I'm going Mechie and Xavier Hutchinson. Love Xavier Hutchinson as a fourth round pick a year ago. And Mechie had some unfortunate circumstances kind of coming in. Leukemia? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say that's unfortunate. And, and was a bummer. But, you know, hey, you've you've now digs. I don't know if he's going to be around for next year. He's a one year deal there. I think Mechie's a pretty good player, uh, and he, he was at Bama, and he, he he was. I I really liked him. Some people didn't love him, but I I, I did really like Mechie. And then he came out and and had uh, the cancer, and now he's he's kind of popped back in. He's he's looked good out there in a few games that that you've seen him out there running some routes. This past game was actually you know half decent. Um, obviously they're going to get Nico back, but I thought maybe Xavier Hutchinson, who's a, a bigger bodied kind of guy could, could step in and have a bigger role with Nico out. It didn't really work that way, but I have seen him out on the field moving around and, and it took a while for Nico to get there and let's just keep Hutch in the system. Keep Hutch moving, stash those guys for me really like Mechie and Hutchinson as a pair down there with Texans pair, paired with CJ Stroud. I think both of those guys have some, some good talent, even a Cade Stover there with Brevin Jordan possibly moving on this year. I know him and CJ have some CJ Stroud have some ties back to Ohio State together playing together. Uh he's been out there a little bit running around this year. So some Texans to to tie yourself to Kendra Miller would be another one for me. I know again this is a this is a you're going into the third year now and you haven't gotten anything from him. You saw him really play well in week 18 last year and then Dennis Allen clearly hated this man. I don't know what he did. I don't know if he <laughs> is he Mark Ingram with the yeah, coach's wife? He fingered the coach's wife. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. But then, uh, like, I was joking around the other day. Think, like, oh, Dennis Allen, one more time out the door, just threw Ke Kendra back on the IR. But, like, in Googling and searching around, it appears that's what happened. Like, he kind of got a little nicked up, and then <laughs> and Dennis Allen sent his pass back to the IR. And everybody on the team was like, whoa, Bo, I don't think he says injured. I don't think he needs to go to IR. Isn't that like illegal in some sort of way? <laughs> so obviously Dennis Allen is no longer there. Now, how much validity and truth to that? But I, you can kind of find it all over the place. It seemed like he kicked him in the shins one time on the way out. and was like, fuck you. Uh, but <laughs> Kendra's got some juice every time I see him out there. You know, I Dennis was kind of calling him out for not really understanding the playbook. Obviously, we've had some soft tissue stuff. Uh, but this is an explosive player. You know, we'll see at the back half of the year if he can get some runs. Jamal Adams or Jamal Williams is terrible. The other backup running back stinks. So it's really just him and AK. AK's getting up there in age. There's been where some trade rumors this year. So we'll kind of see how that pans out. But Kendra Miller is, I think, an excellent stash still. Uh, and, it, you know, sometimes it takes a year or two to, to get right, get on the field and do your thing. It's only um, 23 going on. Right. 22 going on 23. So love Kendra Miller. I got a couple more. But, Austin, you got anybody else you want to throw out there before I, I rattle off a few more? Uh, yeah, final player I'll touch on. And, like, he doesn't necessarily fit th this mold, you know, quite as much. But it, it's Trey Benson, right? A significantly more obvious one. Look, I'll just point out James Conner, 2025. He's a UFA. Mm-hmm. Free right. agent Great. For there, there, real, real chance that he's out of town. Uh, we have Trey Benson now uh, recording 12 touches, which was, you know, a season high for, for him. Uh, 87 yards, also a season high this past week. And he's also put up now consecutive games with double digit fantasy points, by the way. So look, we're, we're seeing it, it was ugly. I'm not going to lie. It was ugly from Trey Benson early on starting to look better. You can kind of see the pattern again. James Conner's out of town, maybe. And then, bam, it's like, all right, I wish I bought low on Trey Benson, right? And right now, I feel like that that buy low window on Trey Benson may have already shot after the past week or two, right? If you wanted to buy low, it really felt like it was, I don't know, weeks one to eight range, right? That mm -hmm. I'm telling you, there are people that spent a mid, early, whatever, second round pick, were panicking. They're just frustrated. They don't even want to see him on the roster. Take him off my hands. That's when you strike. Yeah, that, if you if you have somebody who paid that and thought he was just going to waltz in and take over from James Conner, you're delusional and you're a bad player in general. So take advantage of that person. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I like it. Sometimes you got to reaffirm uh, that, that that guys are good. Kendra Miller was somebody in the same position probably as Benson where you had to spend, 
you know, a decent amount to kind of draft him in some drafts, maybe a high two and some super flex uh, mid two. And it hasn't panned out, but I like Kendra, like, you know, re- reassuring the Benson thing. I don't, I don't hate that by any means. I'm going to throw a couple more guys at you here a little faster. Guys like Malik Washington, who you liked later on here. You saw him in this last game. I think he fits the Dolphins really well in what they want to do. Odell should have never been on this team. Tyreek Hill, will he will he survive in in Miami for another season? Will they trade? Who knows what they'll do? But I think Malik Washington can be a huge part of this team of kind of his skill set and what he can do. And like I said, in this last game, you saw him uh, get a little bit of love. Uh, Pop Douglas was one last year. We told you to hang on. Keep on hanging on to Pop Douglas, baby. Don't don't go trading Pop Douglas. If he's around, scoop him up, get him in a trade. Um, he's excellent. Just needs to get the ball in his hands. Thrash for Cleveland. We held on for dear life with Tillman. Keep hanging on with Thrash. Could be a really good player. Uh, Elijah Moore's a free agent coming into this 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 season. So your three out there could, and I don't know where Judy stands. Maybe he's got an extra year. I don't know if they re-signed him when, or gave him a deal when they re-signed him. I have to look into that. But your starting three could easily be Thrash, Tillman, and uh, Jerry Judy next year for them. So it happens quick. And then I'm going to just throw out some older guys here. Three-year extension with Judy. Okay. Josh Palmer, we've seen Josh Palmer play really well at times throughout his career. He's a free agent this year. Well, I don't know that he'll re-sign with L.A. Is it sexy? No, it's not all that sexy. But, you know, you can look back through the career of Josh Palmer going back to 22, uh, and you can see 6 for 99. Uh, you can see 9 for 57. You can see 8 for 106. 8 for 106 and 2. Seven catches for 60 yards, five catches for 56 yards, four catches for 40 or five catches for 49 yards, four catches for 53 yards. You know, then you get into 23 and you, you see some good games, three for 77, four for 66, four for 60, five for 133, four for 133 and a touch, five for 47. I don't know. To me, that sounds like a bunch of 10 point games in there throughout a Joshua Palmer uh, sort of career here. Uh, from what you see and, and and yeah it hasn't been great this year no he's been a little banged up they got a, they, they got some other parts and pieces in there but you know he's had four for fi- four, four for 63 two for 72 two for 63 there's some juice there with Palmer and he could end up somewhere being somebody's two or three and he's super cheap and and free and I'm sure people have given up on him because they forget that he did was pretty good uh, at one point so super cheap kind of stash there getting a little older Darius Slayton's another one he's old he's gonna be 20 he's 27 he'll be 28 so he's he's gonna be a little older you know even just this year you can go back to Slayton against Pittsburgh had seven targets had 108 yards four catches uh you go back to uh that that Seattle game when neighbors first missed and he kind of went in there eight catches 11 targets 122 yards and a touchdown uh, he was the new neighbors. At right. And then he had another game right after that. Six catches, 57 yards, 11 targets like this guy can go in there and he can be a number two. I think Wandell fits better for what they're trying to do with neighbors right now. And Slayton can be a little banged up, but he's going to be a free agent. They'll probably let him walk. He could e- easily end up somewhere being a two or a three. And while it's not sexy, he could, you know, uh, Slayton, uh, you know, did anybody have him started there at, at, at that week? whatever that was uh, against Seattle there, 10 Man, I almost did, but I did the next week. But you did the next week, and it didn't kill you. Um, and then he had another good game a few weeks later. So while it's not sexy and he's been around for a little while, you know, I, I, don't, I don't hate it at all. So there's, there's some older guys that, that could land in some different situations that could provide some value there uh, for your incoming years. And, and that's kind of what we're trying to find here. We're trying to dig and scratch and claw, find a little value. Like Rashad Bateman was thrown to the Wolves last year. He's had a nice little resurgence, right? Uh, Deontay Johnson is not going to be on this team next year while Rashad Bateman probably will be. So hold tight to your Rashad Bateman stock unless you can get something decent for him. And, you know, Rashad Bateman's been pretty good uh, th- throughout this this season with, with Baltimore. So, um, you know, and it should go without saying, but guys like uh, Jalen Wright and or, uh, uh, Jalen Polk, rather, and and right from Miami all, all those guys don't don't panic you kind of knew what it was coming into things and 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 hold those guys tight so we can wrap up this show on that do you have anything else you want to point out Austin before we get out of here I'm actually mad at myself I, I didn't even think of Jalen Polk and I am I was one of Jalen Polk's biggest fans this offseason yeah. he's he's another great buy low right now had some drops to kind of be in there he was getting some targets they finally had a touchdown this past week so 
Jalen Polk can get rolling. We've seen some chemistry between him and May in, in the preseason. We've seen him get some targets there, and now maybe we can spin this around. He gets some confidence going. That could be that could be a big one. So uh, while all these guys aren't necessarily on your waiver wire, there's some guys that say, hey, don't trade these guys for nothing, and if you can trade for them, trade. Get them on the, on the chippity cheap there. So all right, let's roll out of here. Go check out Austin at Austin Abbott. Two B's, two T's, two F's on the Twitters. He's got a new Patreon out. Make sure you go check that out. You can come check our Patreon out for the $5 holler. Get an extra episode every week. Get the, uh, a premium Discord. You get a free Discord as well that you can go check out. Five-star review on the pod. Hit us up on the uh, YouTubes with a nice little subby. So this comes right to your little fingertips every single week. We'll be here from now until this time next year. Just hitting you with dynasty advice about college guys, about stashes, about buy lows sell highs all that good stuff everything you need to know right to your fingertips with that little subscription button until next time we're gonna get the ff out of here peace peace you have a dynasty where small medium and big-sized dogs all gotta eat <laughs>